Hello all, we're going to pick up with lesson 11 and throughout the first part of this lesson we're going to be talking about a family that they've named the Mazurskis and um, we're going to be looking at their uh, layout of their house and their yard and um, calculating some things um, about that uh, to help us with the math. So um, right now we have a uh, kind of an above view of the Mazursky's house. Um, it's a scale model and if we look down here um, this is the scale and so it asks us here determine two things you could figure out about the property based on the scale. So if we look at this scale you can notice that between um, the each of the marks, well these first two marks, so they show two uh, squares width here and they say that's 20 feet and then they show three squares width and they say that's 30 feet kind of an unusual way to do a scale but we get we get the point it looks like each box is supposed to be 10 feet so from here to here is 10 feet from here to here is 10 feet and so on so it said determine two things you could figure out about the property based on the scale so we usually have a class discussion on this and and look at some things and of course we could figure out how how wide the property is, how long the property is. We could figure out the area of the backyard. We could figure out the perimeter of anything that we wanted. We could figure out the perimeter of the house. We could figure out the perimeter of the whole property. In a bit we're going to actually figure out the perimeter of the backyard. Um, and so we could find out any perimeter or area that we needed. Now one thing that students always say but we have to be careful about is they say we can find the area of the house, like how big the house is. But you have to remember that the house, this is just the footprint of the house. Um, the house might be two stories or it might even have a basement. And so that wouldn't be the area of the entire house, um, It would, but it would be the area that it takes up on the ground. Um, but if it was a two-story, you know, the area could uh, potentially be twice as large as what's even shown here. Um, if it had a basement, a first floor, and a second floor, which don't really have around Houston, but have in the er other areas of the country, it could actually be three times as big as the area of this, um, depending on, you know, if the basement and the second level were the same same size as the first floor. So anyway, um, two things we could find out is we could figure out um, any area that we wanted and any perimeter. Okay, so on this lesson, we, this is actually all of lesson 11a. Um, it asks us, how does the information you recorded in question one relate to the ideas of fertilizing and reseeding? Because it says the Mazurskis are expecting their first child in several months and want to get the backyard fertilized and reseeded. So what would you need to know about um, fertilizing and reseeding um, from this backyard? Well, we wouldn't need to know the perimeter of the backyard, but we would need to know the area. So if we were going to fertilize and reseed, um, that would be something that we would need to know the area of the backyard. Now, we would need to know more than that because, of course, when we go to to actually fertilize and reseed, we're going to need to know how much seed to buy, how much fertilizer to buy. So we'd have to know, you know, how much uh, fertilizer co covers how much area, how much seeding or uh, seed covers how much area, um, and then the cost for that. So that's what we're going to cover in the next lesson. But this is really all we have for lesson 11a. So now for lesson. 11b, we're going to um, actually calculate um, some things about this re-fertilizing re and reseeding the backyard. Um, not re-fertilizing, fertilizing and reseeding the backyard. Um, so they came across this advertisement and it's, it lists the costs of uh, grass seed fertilizer labor as shown in the advertisement. Um, and the owner of the company came to their house and said that the job would take about four hours and that the total cost would be six hundred dollars. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to look at what was advertised and the um, estimate that Jerry gave them and see if Jerry's estimate matches up with um, the advertisement. So um, the first thing that we're going to need to do is we are going to actually need to figure out the area of this backyard. So if we go from here to here and we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, 12, 13. So it looks like it's 13 squares this way, which remember, of course, 13 squares um, at 10 feet per square is 130 feet from here to here. So the width of this yard is um, 130 feet. Now we're going to do that this way. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It looks like about 11 and a half. We can't get that exact, but it's definitely part of another box, but not a whole box. So we'll call it 11 and a half. So if we take 11 and a half times 10, then we get roughly that from here to here is about 115 feet. Um, now, we can use that, except that kind of misses this little portion of the yard here, because if we're just considering this rectangle as 130 by 115, that only gets this area. So we have to, we'd have to go back and get the area of um, this little portion here. But the portion in here, if we want to get the area, is just going to be 115 by 130. And to get area, you just take length times width. So if we take 115 times 130, we get that this um, main rectangular portion is about 14,950 square feet. Now we have to go over and, and pick up this little portion here. Um, I think there's two ways you could do this. You could do this as another little rectangle, or you could figure out what one square, the size of one square is, and then just count them. Um, so we could either do that this is 10, remember each of these squares is 10 feet, not 1 foot. So we could say this is 10 by 10, 20, 30, 40, 55 feet. Or we could understand that any of these squares, if it's 10 foot by 10 foot, that any of these little squares is going to be 100 square feet because it's 10 by 10. So if it's 10 by 10, each of those is 100. So we could either say 10 times 55, or we could say each of these is 100 square feet, except for this one's only half, so this would be 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 50, or 10 times 55 is also 550. So this little additional portion is about 550 square feet. Again, it looks fairly small on the picture, but this is a scale you know, of their entire yard. So that's actually a, a good little portion again up there. So if we take 14,950 and we add 550, then we get that their backyard is approximately 15,500 square feet. So now let's go up here and see um, what the advertisement says um, things should cost for a 15,500 square feet yard. So grass seed, it says that it takes four pounds per every thousand square feet, and then it's a dollar twenty-five per pound. So um, let's first figure out. I'm assuming um, that this is probably like the size of bags that they come in. They probably come in four-pound bags or something like that. Um, or it might have just been convenient because it was per a thousand square feet. So anyway, let's figure out how many thousands we have. Okay, so for the seed, we have um, 15,500, and we're going to divide that by a thousand, and of course, that's just going to be 15.5, because dividing by a thousand just shifts the decimal back. So we have 15 and a half thousands in 15,500. So, um, then if we take that times four pounds per thousand square feet, and there's different ways to do this. If you see a different way that, or think of a different way that you like, um, and it comes up with the same answer, please feel free. I'm not a 
my way or the highway kind of person. As long as you show your work um, and it's and it's sound, I'm fine with that. I think I said that a couple lessons ago, but I want to reemphasize that. So if we take um, 15.5 times 4 pounds, then that's going to give us 15.5 um, times 4 is uh, 62 um, pounds of C. And then at $1.25 per pound, so if we take that times $1.25 per pound, that gets us a cost of um, $77.50. Okay, so the seed should have cost, for the actual seed itself, in the estimate, should have cost $77.50. Okay, so now let's look at the fertilizer. Um, if we're going to get fertilizer, um, it says that you can, and again, this may be how big the bags come in. Um, since it's 12,000 square feet, that kind of makes me think that this is maybe how big the bags are because that's kind of an unusual, you know, 12,000 is kind of unusual. Um, but it says we need 50 pounds per 12,000 square feet. So now again, we need to figure out how many 12,000 square foots there are in 15,500. So if we take 15,500 and we divide it by 12,000, that comes out to be 15,500 divided by 12,000. Um, if we were buying that in bags, we would need like 1.3 um, 50 pound bags. Now sometimes um, when you're going with the company they'll let you use a partial um, bag or something like that if you were going to do it yourself and you were going to go to Home Depot or Lowe's or Walmart or wherever and buy this yourself. Um, of course you'd have to buy two bags because they wouldn't let you buy a part of a bag. Um, you can't go in there and say oh I don't need a whole 50 pound bag can I just take part of this. Um, not going to do that. So worst case scenario, you would need two of these 50 pound bags. Um, but we'll assume since it's a, a company that they're not going to charge you for a whole nother bag that they're not going to use, that they can use someplace else. Um, and we'll say um, we need 1.3 50 pound bags. So 50 times 1.3 is um, 65 pounds. And 65 pounds at 50 cents a pound. That's a little confusing. 50 pounds and 50 cents a pound. But anyway, 65 times 50 cents would only be uh, $32.50. So the actual fertilizer is only $32.50. So they're going to come out. They're going to spend $32.50 on fertilizer when they're or on seed. They're going to spend $77.50 on seed, and then they're going to spend $32.50 on fertilizer. And then the only thing that's left is labor. So it says that labor is $45 per hour, and when Jerry came out, he said four hours for labor. Well, we've got a long ways to go to get to $600, um, and I don't think our labor cost is going to cost enough to make it up to $600. Because if you take labor of four hours times uh, forty-five dollars per hour, that only adds up to be a hundred and eighty dollars. So if we take the totals here and we do, you know, seventy-seven fifty plus uh, thirty-two fifty plus a hundred and eighty. We get a total of, hold on, of $290. So what happened here? We don't know. But as a consumer, when you see some sort of an advertisement like this or, or a company tells you a certain prices, if you're knowledgeable enough to 
do some of the calculations yourself, at least a rough estimate. You know, you may not even need to be this exact, but a rough estimate of how big your yard is, that type of thing. Um, the Mazurskis should find out at this point that Jerry has quoted them almost double of what his cost in his advertisement quoted. And so they should be questioning, did Jerry make a mistake? Was he trying to pull one over on him? They don't know, but the fact of the matter is, is their yard is not big enough to warrant a $600 um, bill. It should only be around $300. So, um, again, this is, is labeled personal finance. This is one of those things where you want to decide, is it is it worth what he's charging? Is it um, fair compared to what he advertised? Um, and also, could they maybe just go do them, this themselves? This is not a... a a super difficult job. It's just a matter of walking around the yard with a, a, a cedar um, and putting this down. And most of the cost of this is in the labor, $180. The actual materials only cost about $110. So they could save themselves a lot of money by just doing them, this themselves. So that's what they mean by personal finance, um, watching out for your own money. And then just as a last thing for this part of the lesson, um, it says that in the future, um, Bob and Carol plan to build a 48 inch tall chain link fence around the backyard with two gates on either side. And that you're going to help them with this project in practice assignment um, 11AB. Um, I'm not sure if that's a typo or if there's actually a, an 11AB. I think it uh, may be 11A and 11. But anyway, what I wanted to remind you of is that when you're looking at um, the fence, we're not talking about the area of the yard at that point. We're talking about the perimeter. So you're talking about the distance around the yard, not the area inside the yard. So you're going to be counting, you know, um, I believe the fence was um, 130 this way and 115 this way. So if you wanted to find the perimeter, you know, you would do 130 plus 115 and so on, um, not multiplication of the length times the width. Um, so let's move on to 11C. So in 11C, we're looking at the Mazurskis doing some more work in their yard, and it is a patio that they want to put next to this grill that they have. So they have this concrete, um, I'm sorry, they have this uh, grill that they have that's uh, six feet by three feet, and they want to put this little circular half circle patio off to the side of that grill. Um, what they have is that the concrete slab needs to be two inches thick and they're going to use this pre-mixed concrete and each of the 40 pound bags that it comes in uh, cover 0.3 cubic feet of concrete and they cost about six dollars and fifty cents. So there's several things that we need to look at here, and um, of course we can see the patio here, but one of the things that they don't take into consideration with this picture is the fact that this um, concrete slab needs to be two inches thick. And so um, there's a depth to this. This is actually a volume rather than just a surface area like we were working like working with with the fertilizer in the seed. So I'm not a very good artist with this, but if we were looking at this um, in a three-dimensional way, um, you would have your slab or your, your patio, but then there's also um, a thickness to this. So it's, it's like this. Oh, that's horrible. Um, to this rather than just a surface area. So... Um, as we're looking at this, we have to take figure out the surface area, but then we have to multiply by how thick it is. Um, I'm going to erase that because that's horrible. So if we want to just figure out the surface area, we need to figure out the, the surface area um, of a circle. So the surface area of a circle, or the area of a circle, is um, pi r squared. If ever there's a formula in your homework that you don't know, just go Google it, look it up, or it may be in the materials. In a, on a test situation, if it's anything short of just say the area of a rectangle length times width, I'll give you that formula so you don't have to worry about that. So if we substitute in here, 
pi is generally thought of to be 3.14, but um, this our materials um, decide to take it out uh, more decimal spots than that, so I'll kind of warn you about that in the homework. Um, they use out to five decimal spots. Um, I've actually had a discussion with the publisher about this, and I didn't think that was a good idea, but um, I didn't convince them to change it. So um, pi, they use in the homework, I believe, five decimal spots. Look at the example problems, and you'll be able to see what they're using. So pi, 3.14159, and then r is the radius of the circle. Well, the radius of a circle is from here to the edge, from the center to the edge. Realize that this is a patio that's a half of a circle that would look like this if we took it all the way out. And so the radius is from here to here, and that would be 3 feet. Okay, so this is 3, and we square that. So, and this is approximately because you can't get exact for pi. So um, 3.14. Um, 14159 is, and then we take that times 3 squared, and you should have a square button on your calculator. It should just, it would just look like a, an X with a square above it. It might be a different letter, like an A with a square or something like that, but you should just be able to type 3.14159 times your number and then this button. If you don't find this button, some calculators have this button, and then you'd have to put a 2 after it, but most calculators have at least a square button. If you need to do some other power, like a 3 or a 4, then you can use this button, or um, calculators will have a button that have like an X to the A. Again, it might be different variables, but it'll be like a letter down here with a letter above, and you push that, and then you put in what you want. So if you wanted, in this case, a square, you'd push this and then a 2. But you should also have a button someplace on your calculator that just does squares. Um, and this comes out to be about 28.27. And that would be square feet because we're just talking about the top of this patio right now. So now that we've got that, we next have to realize that that would be for the entire circle. So we're going to figure out the area of just the patio. So one half of that area would be uh, 28.27 divided by 2. So it would be about 14.14. 14, 14 okay, so the surface area of that patio would be about 14.14 square feet. So the next thing is we have to multiply that by the thickness. But we have to be cautious because the concrete is mixed in cubic feet and this um, thickness that they're talking about is in inches and so we can't just multiply by two that would be calculating how much we would need for a slab that was two feet thick so the thickness we have to realize is two inches out of 12 inches of a foot which would be one sixth um, if you approximated it, 1 sixth is about um, 0.17 inches, or I'm sorry, feet. So that's about 1 sixth of a foot, or 0 0.17 feet. And for what we're doing, the approximation would really be fine, because we've already done some approximations, and we're just trying to figure out how much we need to purchase, and this isn't going to make enough difference. So we're going to take 14.14 square feet, times 0 0.17 feet for the thickness, and that's going to get us 14.14 uh, times 0.17, and that's going to give us 2.4, and now we're talking about a volume, we're talking about the length, the width, and the depth of this thing, and so that's 2.4 cubic feet. You can either write out the word cubic feet or you can write feet with a little three on a little third power on it, which you'd still read cubic feet. So we need about 2.4 cubic feet. Well, each of the bags is 0.3 cubic feet. So we need to know how many of those bags there are. So if we take the 2.4 cubic feet needed and we divide it by 0.3 cubic feet per bag, 
we find that we get um, 8. Now this came out to be exactly 8, um, but that was with some rounding. So when we do this um, in actuality, um, they may want to go ahead and get an extra bag, or they may um, trust that their calculations are correct. Um, when we did things, this was rounded up a little bit. Um, this was rounded up a little bit. So we might be okay with eight bags. Uh, when you go to the store, though, of course, they're not going to give you, again, a part of a bag. It might be nice to get eight bags and just a little bit more, but they're not going to let you do that. So um, we're going to go ahead and calculate the cost here. So if we have the eight bags, I'm still answering number one here. So eight bags times $6.50, that would be, and you might decide to buy a, a, a ninth bag, but if we just did the eight bags, that would be $52.00. And then they said they're going to have 7.5% tax. So we need to add on to that 52 times 0.075, which is $3.90. So if we total that up, we would have 52 plus 390 would be $55.90. So even with tax, they're going to spend less than $60 for their patio that they want to build. Uh, now, again, they're talking here about the future, and it says, in the future, Bob and Carol plan to add a concrete patio on the side of the house adjacent to their driveway and some new sod between the house and the driveway. So sod here, and I think, yeah, here's the patio that they want to do. And it said that you're going to help them do these projects in your practice lesson 11C. So that 11C will be similar to this. The nice thing about this is you won't have to worry about the circle formula, it will be rectangles. But again, don't forget that when you're talking about the patio, you have to have the depth. And if it gives that depth in inches, you're going to have to convert that inches into feet by dividing by 12.